I'm Molly with the Coastal Watershed Council, and welcome to our activity guide for water level and steelhead trout migration. For this activity, you will learn about steelhead trout migration, read a hydrograph to learn about water levels in the San Lorenz River, and then identify what season we might see steelhead in their different life stages. You will need the activity PDF, a blank piece of paper, and a pencil. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to get those things. Now, if you're looking for the activity PDF, this is what it looks like. Your teacher may have shared it with you. If not, you can choose to just follow along in this video or go to the Coastal Watershed Council website at coastal watershedorg to find it. So here's our guiding question for today. How does weather influence or change migrating steelhead trout? So we're going to begin with some vocabulary. The first word, anagemous. Say that with me. Anagemous. A steelhead trout is anadromous. They spend part of their life in fresh water, like a river, and part of their life in salt water, like the ocean or the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Our second vocabulary word is migration. Now, steelhead trout also migrate, and to migrate is the seasonal movement from one place to another. Steelhead trout are anadromous. And in our area, in Santa Cruz County, one of the places they can live is in the San Lorenzo River. They grow bigger and bigger and slowly they start to swim downstream and they spend time in the area called the estuary. That's where the salt water and the fresh water meet. And in our area, that's right next to Santa Cruz Beast Boardwalk that my guess is we're all familiar with. And then they swim out to the ocean spend a few years in the ocean, and then they swim back up the San Lorenzo River to the very same place where they hatched. Now, it's also important for us to know what a life cycle is. Steelhead trout go through a life cycle. It's a series of changes in the life of an organism that include birth, growth, and reproduction. So here's the life stages of a steelhead trout. Egg, alvin, fry, smolt, ocean adult, and spawner. So let's put all that information together and let's take a look at this illustration. You'll notice that the egg and the alvin on the left hand side are living up in the mountains, in the headwaters of the San Lorenzo River. As they start to get bigger, they're able to swim. And the fry, still sort of in the mountains, but starting to move closer to the ocean. They smolt. They live in the estuary. That's the area right next to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk where the salt water and the fresh water mix. The ocean adult, you guessed it, it's in the ocean. And the spawner is returning back upstream to the headwaters where they were hatched. Now that's not an easy journey, is it? Take a moment to think what it might like to be a steelhead trout migrating to and from the San Lorenzo River to the ocean. Now it's your turn. You're going to pause the video and on a blank piece of paper, create your own drawing that shares the same information as the drawing you just saw. You'll see it in just a second again. So again, pause your video and draw. Now, here's a question for you. How do you think weather might affect the life of steelhead trout? 
take a moment and think about that. Show you two pictures and I want you to think which river picture would be easier for the stillhead trout to swim in. This one right here where the water level is pretty low that means that we haven't had a lot of rain recently. Or how about this picture where you can see that there's higher water levels right meaning that we probably had some rain recently. Which one do you think would be easier for a stillhead trout to swim in? Now, we could definitely use our observations and look at those pictures and think, right? Which one's probably easier for the steelhead trout to swim in? But we can also use information. We're gonna be looking at something called a hydrograph. This is a hydrograph right here. And it shows you lots of information. Don't worry, I'll walk it through with you. But I want you to take a moment to just look at this graph. What stands out to you? What do you notice? Go ahead and write down some thoughts that you have. What information might you be able to learn from this graph? Go ahead and pause the video if you wanna spend some more time looking at it. So a hydrograph shows us information about water. Of course, hydro means water, and graph is a picture that shows us information. So let's take a look at this hydrograph and get to know some of the information on here. So starting in the left-hand side, going from bottom to top, you will see some numbers, five, 10, 100, 1,000, and then all the way at the top on the left-hand side, 9,000. That's telling us the amount of water that's in the river. Now, of course, five, is telling us that there's a lower water level. And then between 100 and 1,000, that's a medium water level. And then all the way up to 9,000, that is our high water level. Those numbers that you see there, 5, 10, 100, 1,000, and 9,000, are a measurement of cubic feet per second. One cubic foot would be about the size of a basketball. So imagine water flowing down a stream and scientists are at a certain point and they're watching how much water flows by that certain point in one second. Now, if it's five cubic feet per second, that means that it's pretty low water level. Now, all the way up to 9,000 cubic feet per second, obviously that's a lot of water going through there at one time. Now, scientists didn't just measure how much water is happening one time. They come back month after month. And that's what you see at the bottom of this hydrograph. You see the months starting with January 2019, March 2019, and up with March 2020. Let's get to know a hydrograph by answering two questions. So the first question, what month is the water level the highest in the San Lorenzo River? All right, so use the hydrograph to answer that question. Pause the video if you want, and then come back when you got your answer. All right, so what did you say? So I noticed that the water level is the highest in Jan January 2019. So you can see in the upper left hand corner of the hydrograph that the water level was almost close to 9,000 cubic feet per second. Awesome. So second question, what month is the water level the lowest in the San Lorenzo River? So again, use the hydrograph, pause the video until you have your answer, and then come on back. What 
did you notice the water level was the lowest? So based on this hydrograph, it looks like it's in November 2019. The water level was 10 cubic feet per second. Great work, everyone. Let's take a mind break. So everyone stand up and stretch or shake it out. Here we go. a little bit about the life stages of a steelhead trout at the beginning, but how much water do steelhead trout need in each life stage? As an egg, the spawner actually lays that egg, and the spawner needs a lot of water in order to lay their eggs. An alvin can't survive in a rainstorm, but it still needs lots of water. A fry it's a little bit different. It can't survive in water that's flowing too fast, so it needs slower moving water. A smolt migrates to the estuary when there's lower water levels. And they exit to, into the ocean at the very start of the rainy season. And they return back upstream as a spawner when there's lots of flowing water. So during or after the rainy season. Awesome. So now you're going to combine what you know. You've just learned about the life stages and the water level needs for each. And we, were, we already looked at the water levels based on seasons from the hydrograph. So here's your question. In what seasons would you see each of the life stages? So Use the information from each of the life stages and how much water they need. And also use this hydrograph. So here's the question again. In what seasons would you see each of the life stages? So you're gonna pause the video and take out your drawing that looks similar to this one right here and add in what season you think you would see each of the life stages. Now, based us upon what you just learned about the life stages, but also upon the hydrograph from when there would be lots of water and when there would be a little bit of water. So for example, for the egg, we know that the spawners need lots of water in order to lay their eggs and there's lots of water during the winter. So that's when we would see the eggs. So go ahead and pause the video and label the seasons. You'd likely see each of the life stages. So let's talk about the answers for what seasons we would likely see each of the life stages. So we already talked about the egg we'd likely see during the winter. Now, they're obviously going to hatch from their eggs and we'd likely see the alvins in the winter and spring. The fry, they're starting to slowly move around and we see them in the spring when there's less water around. And the smolts, they're in estuary, they need not a lot of water because they're trying to stay inside the estuary so they're getting bigger and stronger without getting washed out into the ocean. But then when they're ready, when they're ready to be ocean adults, that's going to be in the fall when you can see the first start of the rain. And then the spawners are going to wait for that big rainstorm that usually happens during the winter. And that's when we're going to see the spawners.
So we learned a lot today. So let's take a moment to reflect and share or write down what you may be able to do with the information you learned today. Is there something you can do to help out the steelhead trout? So remember, you can make a difference. You can help out steelhead trout. So think about what you learned today and how you might be able to use this information to teach others, to help out steelhead trout in some way. Did you say save water? That's one of the things that we can do. We can learn more about how saving water can help protect fish by doing the activity, saving water, saving fish. And if you thought about wanting to learn more about steelhead trout, you can do the Become a Steelhead Trout Expert activity. Well, it was so much fun to explore with you today. You can find more activities at the Coastal Watershed Council website at coastal-watershed.org. And if you have any questions, you can email me at mbain at coastal dash watershed.org. Thanks and have a great day.